All right, welcome inside our studios. This is Sixers Post Game Live brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Amy Fiddle, Jim Lina, Mark Jackson alongside. And guys, that is not how we thought this one was go. But we were watching it towards the end, and Jim, you said it. They pretty much did exactly what the Sixers did to them on Monday. They went right at them, points in the paint. 34 field goals in the paint for the Wizards, 39 total field goals for the Sixers. I mean, that is a huge disparity when you're looking at 68, 38 points in the paint comparison. Yeah, I think uh, your statement there, Aim, that uh, the Wizards, they were real good in this game. Uh, Porzingis with 30 points, Bradley Beal with 29, and Kuzma, who really was a no-show the mm -hmm. other night, he was a nice third man act uh, in this game. Sixers just ran out of gas. They kept trying to climb back in this one. Harden three, a Tyrese Maxey bucket. But it was just, it was not enough from other people, I guess, Mark. You know, I, I think, you know, level of depth makes a big difference mm -hmm. in this league. But when you can always the Wiz, and the Wiz has 58% from the field goals <clears> and 27 <throat> assists to only seven turnovers. To me, they're saying we didn't cause a disruption in what they mm -hmm. tried to do. And that could go with fatigue, to, um, and the pace was good. And look, Wizards was very determined to score around that paint and they were successful at it. Yes, they were. Let's go back downstairs and check in with Kate Scott and All Abs and Abby. And you guys said it. I mean, it's obviously a game that they wanted to have back. It seems like they just kind of ran out of gas. There was just not enough there and defensively to not have Joel and B. We know his presence in the paint, guys. And then no DeAnthony Melton. It was just maybe a little too much over to, to overcome, Kate. Yeah, no doubt about that, Amy, because when you look at the, the offensive performance by the Sixers, Ola, they were great. 46% from the field, 53% from three. They had their best shooting night from beyond the arc on the season, made 19 three-pointers. But when you're missing Joel Embiid and DeAnthony Melton, it's going to be easy for the other team to score, too. Yeah, it was just one-dimensional approach right, mm -hmm. uh, right tonight from the Wizards, and they were just in attack mode, and the Sixers, although they knew what they were supposed to do, just really couldn't offer up any resistance. Uh, guys, uh, Kate, you just said it. Uh, it was a season-high Sixer with the three-point game. Yeah. The Sixers had 19 threes to five for the Ooh. Wizards. If this wasn't a, like a kind of a flashback to old-style basketball, <laughs> they dropped their head and they attacked the goal. Yeah, well, and it was frustrating the big man beside me all night long because I'm sure you played in games like that. Yeah, and you knew what they were trying to do, and it was simple, right? There wasn't any <laughs> intricate kind of offense. They were just, like you said, Coach, putting their head down and going right to the rim. Hey, guys, Mark here. You know, unfortunately, we lost again tonight, but uh, let's talk about what do we need to do to kind of get Tobias going. Mm. Tobias finished with 16 points, nine rebounds, so not bad. I'm not saying he played horrible, but I, 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 I think he's capable of more. And I know we're looking at Max, we're looking at James, we're saying Joel, but I think Tobias, to me, is a piece that can really put this team over the top. Yeah, he's just got to get the ball, Mark, right, a little bit more. There are times when he gets it in spurts, he does well, and then they kind of go away from him and forget about him. Mm -hmm. I think that's his biggest problem. They've got to not forget about him. And I think Ola mentioned it actually during the broadcast, Mark, where we all talked about how Tobias had to kind of refigure things out when we got James at the trade deadline last year, then really turned it on in the postseason. And he's had to kind of figure things out differently because Joel's already missed a couple of games early in this season. So I think before Joel sat the first game, he knew that he was the fourth guy who was going to get the ball. But now a couple of games, what, this was the third one Joel has missed early. Now he's going to bump up in the order. So I think he's still figuring things out because I'm with you. I think that if he can find the groove that he found in the postseason next last year, and look out when it comes to this season for the Sixers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they need him to get going and be a little bit more of a balanced scoring attack. All right, guys, we will see you uh, coming up on Friday for that next game. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Thank Thanks, you. team. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Tobias. He has not scored 20 points all season, and I know it's early, but here's a guy that we were kind of commending that he his three-point game has come along. He had kind of gotten rid of that mid-range game, which used to work so well for him. Mark, does he need to go back to that? No, I mean, he shot four for five from three tonight. He had 16 points. But for me, I, I think he's kind of a forgotten uh, person here. <clears throat> because when you go to the other team's locker room and you look on their board, they got you well, Hart, and, uh, and Maxi. But, yeah, that's fine. And Danny, why they keen on this guy? I think Tobias is capable of scoring you 18 points a game. And I agree with Allah. He does not seem to be in the constant rotation of ball touches up and down the floor. And as a, a player who used to try to get some buckets here and there, the game comes easy when you're touching the ball every possession. You might not have to shoot it, but when that ball's in your heel, you keep the rhythm of the game. When it comes to you and sprout and, uh, and, and periodically, you kind of lose the tempo. I think they need to find a, a vital effort to kind of get him involved. 
Yeah, Jim, I mean, we've talked about this in seasons past. Sometimes Tobias still needs that time to kind of figure out his role in this. Obviously, he's still kind of trying to find that role. Now with Joel Embiid out in these games, he doesn't really know what it is. Five shots, you would probably like a little bit more from him. Yeah, um, I'll be honest, Dane. My sense is I listen to you and Mark and even Alo there speaking. Uh, the emergence of Maxi is what has hurt Tobias Harris more than anything else. Uh, Mark's right. You, you know, to get involved, you got to be touching the ball. Uh, I'll tell you a glaring uh, number in this game if you're talking about Tobias Harris. He didn't shoot a foul shot. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like if, if you're going to want to assert yourself and uh, I'm going to try to score some buckets, my team is shorthanded. I mean, come on. Uh, Good top scorers, that's not going to happen. You're, mm -hmm. you're not going to go out there and not get to the foul line. Good good scoring players get to the foul line. And I sympathize a little bit with Tobias Harris. I think he's capable of scoring the ball, but I don't know if he's going to score significantly with this team on a consistent basis because I'm not sure there's enough shots to go around. Still that work in progress when it comes to Tobias finding his fit with this team. Let's check in with Doc Rivers after this loss. Uh, let's go. They obviously had the size advantage the other night too, but what did they maybe do better today to exploit that? I thought they exploited our switches a lot tonight. They uh, they moved the ball. They they shot 58 percent basically from the field. And they made some tough shots. I will say that. Uh, but defensively, we we did not have great energy tonight. Um, you can see it from the start of the game. Uh, Bill was way too comfortable all night. Uh, Perzingis was comfortable all night, uh, and it fed off of that. Even down the stretch, I mean, we gave, uh, I think it was Kuzma, their shot. You're not going to win games like that. Do you think James is like, when he, when he fell in the first quarter, do you feel like that affected him at all? Yeah, I don't know. I know he went out. Um, I think I thought it was the second half something happened because uh, there was a stretch where we were waiting for him to come back in the game and he was in the locker room. So um, I don't ever check what. I just know he wasn't there uh, to come back in. So I don't know if something happened in the second half or if it was a continuation for something that happened in the first half. With DeAnthony out, obviously, on the t stuff. Yeah. What did you think of him with that? I don't know. Uh, not great tonight. Uh, we were switching a lot, so quite honestly, I felt like what Matisse does by the switch, and we kind of lost a little bit of that. And then, you know, they put Porzingis on him, and that's what, that's what teams do. Um, and, you know, that's something he just has to keep working on. When they're going to put a five on you or their worst defender on you, uh, try to be more of a pick setter, um, pass and roll. You know, that clearly affects, you know, when we said pitch, you know, we had DeAnthony or Tyrese rolling. You know, Matisse rolling is, is what they wanted. So, yeah. Almost what you have to do. I just didn't think, you know, you watch the game the other night. Our, our switch was really physical. Think about it. They didn't get any sw any slips. Uh, they didn't turn the corner a lot. Tonight our switches was really soft. I just I said it at halftime. I said, guys, we're not pushing up in the switches. We're not up to touch. Um, they're going downhill and they're slipping on us. So not very physical tonight. Uh, Tyrese has been in such a group all mm -hmm. and just curious when Joel does come back, how do you ensure that him, that him James, and Tyrese continue to? Well, we have to. I mean, it's part of our growth. Um, I mean, Tyrese is playing terrific basketball. Um, you know, I still think the officials have to get used to his drives. You know, um, you know, the whole league, you see what they're going to do now, and they should. They're riding him out down low because he's so small. They know they can kind of ride him out of bounds. And um, I thought he had a bunch of those tonight. He's making them. Uh, but that's that's a foul that has to get called at some point. It's, it seemed like the officiate. Yeah, some uh, questionable calls probably going both ways on that one. But unfortunately, the timing of them really kind of hurt the Sixers when they were trying to mount that comeback. We've got to talk a little bit about Tyrese Maxey because I think, Jimmy, you bring up a good point. Here's a guy, four of his last five games, he's had 20 field goal attempts or more. Coming into this season, or pardon me, into last season when he was the starter, he'd only had five games with 20 or more. So here's the evolution of him. What can Tobias do to kind of still evolve his game while not limiting Tyrese Maxey? Yeah, I think in Maxey's case, Aim, he, he's able to create shots in so many different ways. Like Doc Rivers doesn't call like that many plays mm -hmm. for Tyrese Maxey. Some pick and rolls, yes. But he's the recipient when Mark did that pregame tape on him driving at Porzingis. Every one of those plays were throw-aheads 
mostly from James Harden. But because Maxie is so good and so lightning fast running the floor, you know, he gets out in that lane. And if you throw the ball ahead to him, I mean, that's an, you can't get a better offensive play. I don't care what you what you draw as a coach. And Tobias Harris, he doesn't like have that same quality about him, but few players do, to be honest right. with you. So it's a it's not a knock on to, uh, Tobias. I think it's more a commentary on the variety of things that Maxi really does well that put tremendous pressure on a defense. Let's take a look at Tyrese Maxi's night. That is our Yingling presents Logger Up. I mean, here 32 game or team high 32 for him. He doesn't. He had a lot more threes than he had on Monday night. He, we know that he really attacked the paint, but. He takes what's given to him and sometimes what's not given to him and takes it anyway, Mark. His speeds allow him to create shots that may not look like they open. Meaning, you know, you look like there's not enough time to get your shot off, but he's quick trigger so he can get it off. And his ability, this guy was playing off of him mm. 10 feet, and he was still able to beat him to the rim and finish over him. He's a good player. I mean, yeah, it was, it's, a team, it's a game high, 32 right here, but just the, the volume of which you're seeing him and the variety, Jim, I mean, you just, I know that the no turnovers is also really big too, but. Yeah, and uh, you just saw uh, on that little highlight tape right there, and it doesn't matter who's in front of him, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, Porzingis is a pretty good shot blocker, I mean, he just, uh, he's fearless, number one, he has tremendous yes. technique. When he gets in the basket area, as Mark has pointed out on many occasions, he goes off either foot and uses either hand. Try figuring that as a defender when you have this blur coming at you, like which foot? Whoa. No, too late, dude. That ball's already in the basket. How does he get good at that? Because that's such an awkward thing. I mean, for people, that, if you're wondering at home, just think about just trying to jump. Your natural thing is probably to go to your dominant hand. It doesn't matter for him. He can jump on the off hand. He can jump on the same hand, mm -hmm. same same foot. I mean, yeah, it's it, and it, the body control. It's a commentary, I believe, of how much time this guy has spent in the mm -hmm. gym yes. working on those kind of things around the basket. What's he? How he has that phrase. Uh, with some about you know when you're working on your own. What, what happens in the dark comes go. to uh, comes, comes to the light, light. Yeah. Uh, when it actually counts. And you see that. I mean, I remember when he was at Kentucky, he started this thing called the Breakfast Club. They would go at 6 a.m. sometimes 5 a.m. He and Emmanuel quickly and just work out by themselves, which is insane to think about if you're a college student <laughs> getting up that early and doing anything, much less working All out. His life. Exactly. That's what he was uh, taught to do, and it's carried over, and you're seeing the benefits of it here at the next level in the NBA. All right, we're going to take our first time out here on Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Curato Insurance. Let's talk a little bit more about how the Wizards attack the Sixers in the paint, because no Joel Embiid.